Why do we need to work? Why do we have to go out there in the rough and tumble of the marketplace and, and earn a living? Our daily crust. You know, in our earlier segment, we discussed the notion that, in fact, it's God who calls all the shots in terms of what we're going to be earning during the course of the, the year. Uh, these decisions are made on New Year, Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah. And I'm actually speaking to you on the eve uh, of Rosh Hashanah. So if God decides everything on high and uh, the, our allocation has already been apportioned to us, why can't we just uh, sit back and enjoy life and do whatever we want to do and whatever floats our boat, uh, play a round of golf, go to the theatre, go to a concert, travel, and our daily portion will arrive willy-nilly because it's been decided on high. Now, this is not a flippant question. It's a very serious question if we truly subscribe to the notion that we are not the masters of our own financial destiny, but rather it's entirely in God's hands. And the Jewish mystics address themselves to this question, and they answered in the, in the following fashion. It is true that our daily portion, our livelihood for the year, is decided by the Almighty. But as a consequence of the expulsion from the Garden of Eden, as a result of Adam and Eve's original sin, Adam was told, by the sweat of your brow shall you eat your bread. In other words, work, if you will, is a punishment. If you like, as some of the great mystical masters described it, it is a divine tax imposed on us. It's an obligation that we need to fulfill. If we, humanity hadn't sinned in the Garden of Eden, there would be no need for work. There would be no need for us to go out and earn our daily crust. But as a consequence of sin, we have to accept the punishment of having to go out to work. But at the same time, they caution that although we have to, inverted commas, serve out our sentence, what will flow to us, our livelihood, our financial success, is not a function of our work. We need to see our work purely, if you will, as an exercise that we need to go through in order to work off our sentence. This is one way of seeing the function of our need, or if you will, the sentence that has been imposed upon us to go out and earn a living. But this in turn raises the question of how much do we actually have to do? By what degree do we need to exert ourselves in order to earn our daily bread? And here I want to share with you a really interesting idea from Rabbi Dessler, the author of Mikhtav Meliyahu, one of the great Jewish thinkers of the uh, 20th century. And he describes a notion of what I call work-God balance. In other words, we have to do our time. We have to serve out our sentence. But says Rabbi Dessler, we have to do so with the consciousness that, in fact, there is no linkage between, inverted commas, our financial success and the work that we put in. To ascribe our rewards to our work, says Rabbi Dessler, is tantamount to heresy. So we have to be very careful, says Rabbi Dessler, 
that when we work and see inverted commas the fruits of our labour to realise that in fact they are no such thing. On the other hand, he says, that we have to balance this perspective with another possible danger, which if, is if we take the flip side and say, well, in fact, I am just going to exert myself to a very, very minimal degree in order to serve my sentence. We may find ourselves in a position uh, that, in fact, our financial fortunes are not what we hope them to be. That, if you will, from our perspective, God fails to deliver the allocation that we think that we deserve. So says Rabbi Dessler, what we need to achieve in our working lives is a work-God balance. In other words, not to work to 100% of our capacity because we need to leave room to understand that in fact what flows to us, that our success, the inverted commas, the financial rewards that come about are not a function of our work. On the other hand, says Rabbi Dessler, we must not work so little that in fact if we see that there are no rewards or there are insufficient rewards for the level of work that we put in, that we will question the Almighty's judgment and his wisdom. We need to strike this very delicate work-God balance in our lives. The question that I have for myself and that I would like to pose to you is, where am I holding and where are you holding on this God-work balance, which is so fundamental if we are to live an authentically believing life which fully comprehends and internalizes the notion that in fact it's God who's calling the shots. Wishing you a very happy and sweet new year.